Hey everybody, how you doing? AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, trying to get rid of a couple of these amps here real quick so I have more room for the 6 meter project. So, I have an Ameritron AL80B. I diagnosed it already. It needs a new transformer. Someone put fuses in it that were way too big. They must have had a short and the B positive, probably the tube. I already checked the filter caps. They appear to be okay. He had the per the wrong resistor in for the soft start. It's supposed to be a 2 amp slow blow. The resistor that was in here, the 10 ohm, 10 watt, broke apart. Someone had replaced it at some point. I don't know where it went, but it's in pieces. Um, so I put a new one in. Uh, I have a new transformer from Ameritron, so I'm going to pull it out, the old one out, and I'm also going to change the caps at the base of the plate choke because one of them has you know, some weird little mark on it. I don't know if it arced from the side to the cover or what, so I'm just going to replace them. I'm also going to replace the plate blockers just, uh, you know, since I have them here. So I'll take out these metal oxide variesters and I'm going to put the gas discharge tubes at the base of the tube socket. I'll clean the rotary switches. So the way I diagnose this is uh, with these leads disconnected it fires up so someone else tried to fix it they couldn't figure it out. So I took a reading with these wires dis disconnected from the board. I took a reading from each wire to the chassis and it was in it was like 150k ohms or so it should have been over mega ohms so that tells me there's a short uh, between the winding and the core so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and reinstall and I'll uh, I'll you know reinstall the new one and I'll be back see you soon okay the old transformers removed so Unscrewed all the standoffs, removed the center standoff, unsoldered everything from this side of the board, had to remove the line wire from the safety interlock, and the other one from the fuse holder. I leave the coax attached so I can basically just pick the board up, lift it up that way, and um, don't forget to disconnect the filament leads over here. So I'm going to take the MOVs out, clean up these solder. Uh, these uh, the solder off these holes over here for the filament leads. I already cleaned out all these holes, so and don't forget to take the screw out over here. So okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one. I'll be back. Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com. 203-892-4119. So I'm back with the completed amplifier. This thing needed a lot of work. Someone else had their hands in here. Actually, a couple different people. I guess they couldn't get it to work. So now it's all set. And I'm actually going to show it producing output. I don't usually uh, do that. But I'll um, I'll do that. I always send, just take note, I always send the customer a video, a personal video of it working on one band of their choice. So it's all still hooked up. So I'll show it in operation. I always go from 160 up to 10. I test every single band. I don't recommend using it on 17 meters. They're known to having issues with the plate choke on 17 meters. Okay, so I'll go over everything I did. So needed a plate transformer, plate slash low voltage slash filament transformer. So that has been removed. It needed new SO239 connectors. These ones have like no grip at all. You can just plug it in, plug them in. I have to do it with one hand here, but they just have like no. No grip at all. One of them just falls right out. Okay, so that's that. So swung the board up, put new thermal grease behind there. Um, had very little, if any, uh, two amp slow blow fuse for the soft start resistor in series with it and zip tied the high voltage wiring the secondary uh, wiring off the transformer it was missing the 0.47 cap in uh, that's in parallel with the uh, meter protection diode so check the series glitch resistors they're fine so that's all good right there New caps at the base of the plate choke. One looked damaged. I replaced both of them. 
I got rid of the metal oxide variesters. I installed gas discharge tubes at the base of the tube socket. I used the I used iMac tube for testing it. I'm waiting on his new Penta uh, lab tube, which I'll just end up shipping to him. I didn't know I had a good iMac tube I could test it with. This is not the anode cap that goes with the amp. He didn't send me the tube or anode cap, so it's out of a TL922. So uh, that's just temporary. I'll pull that out. That goes to another amplifier. I soldered the connections better over there. That's known to have an open that goes between the output network and the play tune cap. So uh, this thing is good to go. I've also cleaned the TR relay, deoxic gold. Clean the self start relay with deoxic gold. Clean the input rotary switch with deoxic gold, and the output rotary switch with deoxic gold. The wafer portion has had some heating, but the contacts look good. This is the stuff I use. It's awesome. This is configured for 120, so it requires 20 amp fuses, and uh, everything works. So I'm going to turn it on and show it producing a kilowatt PEP with my Bird 43 going into a bird dummy load. Okay, so let me put the cover back on and uh, I'll be right back. Let's see you soon. Okay, so it's fired up. Radio is still keyed. I'll unkey the radio. Okay, so here's that old resistor I was telling you about. Someone had replaced it at some point. When I touched it, it just opened up. They had a 5 amp fuse in series with it. They just kept changing fuses, changing fuses. They must have had a short on the B positive and just kept turning on, turning on, turning on until they ended up taking out the transformer. This is the very first transformer I've ever had to replace in one of these. So just so you know, these transformers have been very reliable. I've never had to change one. So I don't know what this guy did, but he managed to take it out. Okay, so I've got it. Tuned up for 10 meters. I'm gonna go ahead and key the radio. Audio hello. Remember this uh this has an old iMac tube in it. I don't know what the emission level is, so I got the radio set for 75 watts, roughly PEP. Bird meter, as you can see, it's one KW slug on PEP. So I'm gonna go ahead and key the amplifier. Audio hello, audio hello, audio hello. Audio, hello, 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 audio. Let me get, oops, sorry. Get a little closer to the microphone here. Audio, hello, audio, hello, audio, hello. 1KW, no problem. Audio, hello, audio, hello. Just keep in mind that this is like a relative meter. Always use an external meter and only put enough power into it to get max the maximum rated power output. You know, always tune it for max output, and then you can turn the radio down. You can turn the transceiver down. You don't have to run it at that maximum output. Just always go by the manufacturer's ratings, power rating, ratings inside the book. Make sure that you're understanding it properly. A lot of amplifiers, especially older ones, they rate the, the power levels actually the input power, not the output power. So... So that's about it. You know, if you need an amplifier repaired, I'm gonna key the radio. Let me show you it's on 10 meters. If you need an amplifier repaired, any of the amplifiers you see in my videos, feel free to give me a call. My phone number is 203-892-4119 and my website's amprepairguy.com. As you can see, a couple amps shipped out. Waiting on the customer to pick this one up, and I have to do that one, and I have some AL572s to do, but uh, clearing some space. I'm going to get back, uh, today I'm going to get back to working on the 6 meter amp. When I have a bunch of that done, I'll shoot another video. So, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Have a good day. Catch you all later.